Did you know your iPhone could do this when turned on and this when turned off? For most of you, probably not. And there is more where that came from. On the iPhone 14 series, Apple introduced the power up and power down sounds you heard before and you can find them in settings, accessibility, audio and visual. Hidden in plain sight and while those sounds are not as uplifting as what you have on macOS, they are quite unique in their own ways. Many Apple Watch fans, including myself, never knew it was possible to use an Apple Watch directly from your iPhone and I'm going to show you how. You know, Apple being Apple, that feature is actually surprisingly responsive enough. In settings, you can find this feature as well. Of course, it's not even close to the usefulness of iPhone mirroring which we have on macOS, which is also quite very useless. But then, it's something you can use to win an argument when you are in one with a Galaxy or Google Watch user. I mean, that's fair enough, right? If you have more than one iPhone connected with the same Wi-Fi network and Apple ID, did you know you could use each of them to control the other? Okay, limited control but still control regardless and by definition, it's handy once in a while. I stand corrected once in a blue moon. I wish I could control you guys to click my subscribe button but tough luck. Do you guys remember on iOS 17 sometime when we had and we still enjoyed the volume control buttons which followed the media player that came on the lock screen. For some reason, when Apple started the iOS 18 betas, they took it away and then they brought this but hid it and made the default option to be turned off for that future. Now that makes no sense. That's something I personally found really handy when I needed it. I mean, not every time I can just like be clicking the volume buttons. You know what? Actually, I'm happy I found this feature again, also in settings. But then can anyone explain why Apple had to go through the trouble of making it off by default and then keeping it hidden in accessibility. This one is nice for a select group of nature enthusiasts like myself. You know, you could get background sounds on your iPhone without using a third party app. And to be honest, they could be used to help with your sleep. In my experience though, with AirPods of course, especially that calm rainy sound. To me, it induces some momentary sense of peacefulness, calm and quiet. Although we know that some make believe, but we'll go with that. And yeah, you can find this feature in accessibility as well. Next is called Music Haptics. Some of you know this feature, some of you did not because when Apple brought it up in iOS 18, they didn't really make a big deal out of it. They just quietly tucked it into the music settings along with crossfade. You know, it's like adding Nokia kind of vibrations to your music player currently supports only Apple Music. Yeah, with haptics. Apple believes like this is meant to help people that are hearing impaired or you know deaf in some way. So like get a sense of how the music feels like through the haptics without actually hearing it. In my opinion, the haptics don't even sound in any way like the music or feel in any way like the music. But Apple had to just try, I guess. What do you guys think though? Does music haptics in any way feel like a sense of listening or a sense of Perceiving music. Oh, finally, we have one code back there. Yeah, many of you know about this feature. Essentially, it lets you trigger shortcuts either by double tapping or triple tapping the back of your iPhone. Yeah, you can see me go. It's quite handy, but very annoying if it's something you accidentally trigger for any reason. I recommend not using this one though, but I had to just add it to make my video longer. So my name is Hadi and I'm trying to get to 10k subscribers this year if that's even possible or realistic, but you guys should hit the sub button and you know, keep watching. Yeah, I have more in stock.